seven years of being up in the frozen north, there was another gold strike going on in Nevada. So, young Tex Wicker decided to try his wares in Nevada. Although he wasn't really looking for gold, other people were. He was looking for the easy way to make the gold money, by gambling and eventually by putting on what was known as prize fights, which happened to be legal in Nevada. Throughout most of the country they weren't, but out on the west coast they were. He staged the very first big promotion. He put Joe Gans against a little lightweight. These guys weigh 126 pounds, named Battling Nelson. And this fight, everybody made pretty much money. The fighters made money. He put up a $30,000 guarantee. First, to be split each way. Everybody made money. The bartenders who sold drinks, people who sold sandwiches. The fighters made money. The promoter made money. Everybody did well. He promoted another boxing match, and then after Jack Johnson became champion, he said, look, we're looking at our prize here. So Jim Jeffries was induced to come out of retirement to face this horrible black guy who was going around making statements like, I can whoop any white man in America, and I can get real intimate with any white woman in America. This had to end. So on July 4th, 1910, in Reno, Nevada, as before mentioned, the fight was staged. Tex Rickard was the promoter. Jim Jeffries stepped into the ring, and for the first time in his life was knocked down. The fight lasted 15, round, 15 rounds before the doctors had to come in and stop the fight. Jim Jeffries, who had been in retirement five years, later on admitted, never in my life could I have fought this man not so much as laid a hand on him. He was knocked out in the 15th round. Actually, he was out cold on his feet. The doctors stopped it. But throughout the land that whole year, there had been this emergence of a, of a wish, a need, for a great white hope to come along defeat Jack Johnson. Jim Jeffries had been that great white hope. But after that, Jack Johnson's attitude and carefree, flamboyant lifestyle got him in as much trouble as much they didn't have parade, um, parade magazine. They didn't have help me out. Tell National Examiner. Hmm? National Examiner. National Examiner. National Enquirer. National Enquirer. Enquiring Man. Once again, I apologize. No telephone. You don't do this on radio, do you? There has been a... Well... <laughs> there has been some solicitation. Uh, I've got to do it, though, as the next great white hope. If I go on radio and talk like this, that would make me, the 2010, 100 years later, great white hope. Anyway, Jack Johnson married a white woman. Her name was Etta Duryea. By the way, these, we're going to have a final exam at the end of the year. You want to remember these names. <laughs> do, Etta we, do we have to spell was, them? Hmm? Do we have to spell oh, them? Of course. <laughs> Anybody knows who Etta Duryea was? I, got you. I bet you Bill up there can remember Dan Duryea, the actor, back in the 1940s, who was in a lot of Audie Murphy movies. We can later on. He, he became a late. You gotta have patience. He was a great white hope of the 1930s. This this story evolves. Anyway, his first white wife, who was his second second wife, totally uh, committed suicide six months later. And then he began to escort another lady named Lucille Cameron. Again, right this down. Lucille Cameron. Cameron, as in Cameron, Texas. Lucille Cameron. Now, there was a judge whose name was Kennesaw Mountain Landis. That was his name, Kennesaw Mountain Landis. Later on, he became the commissioner of baseball. He became famous because he uh, was involved in the Black Sox scandal of 1919, in which it was learned that the Chicago White Sox, several of their players, had thrown the game and banned several of those guys from baseball, including Joe Jackson. You've heard the old saying, Say it ain't so, Joe. But I digress once more. I keep getting carried away. That's, I wasn't going to have only had a teleprompter. I wouldn't stray away. You've got D. You've got a real live prompter. Hmm? I said you've got a real live prompter. Yeah, but it, there's no tele here, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so. That was the best one I've ever heard all day. 